life has been? Out of control. Out of control. You're confused. Touch those who are not your door, but will hear your words through social media, through other people that are gifted to the Lord. But touch them where they are, Lord. We ask that you would bless those who are on their way, Lord. Bless all of those who are traveling, who are, who are far from home today, Lord, but are at home with their children, Lord. We ask that you would bless our very own Reverend and Sister Stevens as they are in California, Lord. Yes. Continue to touch them, Lord, yes. and embrace them and surround them and their family yes. for this time of celebration. Yes. We ask that you would bless those who are speaking today, Lord. Yes. Those who you have given a word for us, Lord, pour into them, Lord, as they pour out your word unto us, Lord. Open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, and our ears, Lord, so that we will hear you clearly, that we will get clear understanding of what message you have for us today, Lord, and allow us to be able to internalize it, Lord, so that we can bless others. And I give you all glory and praise, Lord. Have your way in this service, and let our praise be sweet unto your ears. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Our first song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, um, is Hark the Herald Angels Sing Out Loud. It's a, a, it's a little twist, but I love it. So I hope that you love it too, uh, by the spiritual spot.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, and next, I will be doing our mission statement. If everyone will join with me. To reach our world with the gospel while teaching our members to walk in obedience to the word of God. Studying it to become qualified workmen. Skillfully using it in our personal living and the winning of others to Christ. Amen. And I'll have Sister Chanel Griffin to do our scriptures for today. Amen. Good morning, Christ. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Chanel Mary Griffin, as you heard, and I will be bringing three scriptures for you guys today. The um, first scripture. Luke 2, verses 13 and 14. Suddenly a great company of the heaven, heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Matthew 2, verse 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the last scripture, last but not least, Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he had spoken my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. His, is it quiver? Yes. <laughs> he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He said, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Holy Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and, and honored by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Good morning, family and friends. I will be voicing your prayer requests. So if you have any prayer requests that you'd like to write out, please have them um, brought up to me so we can uh, voice your prayer requests. Um, following the song, um, Now Behold the Lamb. The altar is open. If you would care to uh, come forward and have someone pray for you and pray with you, uh, one of our deacons or ministers will come and uh, minister to you.
We give ourselves to you, God. We give our heart to you. We give our lives to you. And as we would stand before you, Lord God, we ask that you accept our worship this morning. Accept our praise this morning. As we lift our hands and we lift our voices to you, accept our praise because we love you, Lord, because you first loved us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. As we stand before you, there's requests before you, Lord God. There's people standing before you. You know their needs, Lord God. And we ask that you bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you look on um, Michaela Odom, Lord God, that she's not feeling well. Our young saint, Lord God, not feeling well for a few days. And we just ask that you bring about healing in her body, Lord God. Bless her parents as they care for her, Lord God. Give us what she stands in need of today. Lord, we ask that you bless those that are not with us today for one reason or another. But you know where they are, and you know what they need, and you know their requests. And we just ask that you move on them, even where they are. Bless our first lady and our pastor, Lord God, in the name of Jesus that they may enjoy their time with their family as they worship you, God. We know that they're worshiping you even now, Lord God. And we just ask that you be with them, continue to bless them in their bodies and with their family, Lord God. We just ask that you be with each one of us, Lord God. We only have a few requests, Lord God, but you know the needs of each one of us. Lord, whether we spoke it or whether we, or we're praying for ourselves, Lord God, we ask that you visit each one of us right where we are what we need, whatever we stand in need of, Lord God, we ask that you minister to us as individual, Lord. Individually, we lift up our prayer requests to you, God. And Lord God, collectively, as a family, a church family, we lift up Christ centered Church of God, Lord God, that you would move and, and be in our midst, Lord God, to bless us as only you can bless us, Lord. Teach us and show us what you want us to do, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the spoken word. Lord God, from our pastors, Lord God, we ask that you give them the anointing from on high, Lord, give them the words to speak, and open up our hearts and our minds that we'll receive what thus says the Lord this morning. We ask that you give it all to us, Lord God, that we can live for you, and we can uh, do your will, Lord God, in this world. We ask that you bless us, and we continue to bless you, and glorify you, and praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you again and again for what you have done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do on our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray, with much thanksgiving in our hearts, we say thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Amen. 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 Who is this king? Yes. Who lays 
Let us pray for you pray for our children and young people and young adults. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you for this gift that you have given us, Lord God. We just ask that you be with them, Lord God, as we try to be an example to them, to pray for them, and to lift them up, God. We just ask that the words that they say they will apply to their lives, Lord God. Let it not be vain words, but they may hide these words in their heart that they may not sin against you. We ask that you strengthen them, Lord God, in their walk, Lord God. That every step that they take, every decision that they make, Lord God, it would be first directed by the will, your will, God. We just ask that you strengthen. We see how you bless them. You've blessed them in so many ways in their education, in their lives. Look at you protecting them from dangers that they've seen and dangers that we have not seen. We thank you, Lord God, how you've cared for them and how you've blessed them, Lord God. And we just ask that you continue, Lord God, to continue with your grace and your mercy and your protection and your love upon them as they go and make their mark on this world, Lord God. But every footstep that they make, they will walk in your steps, Lord God. Every decision that they make, that it will be a decision that's thought of and prayed for and directed by you, God. We just ask that you bless them, Lord God, in all their doings, Lord God. Lord, let not peer pressure be the thing that leads them. Let no enemy, Lord, come against them, Lord God, that they stray, Lord God. We just ask that you hover over them, Lord God, and be their God. Be their protector. Be their everything, Lord. Help nothing that they have learned um, as a child on up, Lord God. From the youngest to the oldest, we just ask that you bless them. Bless them, Lord God, and anoint their lives, that their lives may be an example to someone else, that they may lead someone else to be, or to know you and to be closer with you because of the, the, the stand that they've taken, God. We ask that you do it for each one of them, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, even again for Michaela, that she's not here, Lord God, because she's sick in her body, but you keep our children protected, even from illness, God. Even from illness, Lord God, we just ask that you do it. Glorify yourself in them and through them. In Jesus' name we pray. With much thanksgiving in our hearts, we say thank you again for giving them to us. And we pray to them every day, Lord God, that you will protect them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, Christ Center. Good morning. Um, at this time, we will be lighting our Anvic candle, the candle of peace. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my life. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. John 15, 9, through 9 and 10. Isn't it wonderful to think that all the love the Father has for Jesus is the same love, love that Jesus has for us? Amen. This reality is much to comprehend in this week. Father, we thank you for your abiding love. We thank you that we know love by this that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers and sisters. Amen. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world, the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? First John 3, 16 and 17. As we continue in the season of Advent, we may see outside of ourselves. May we recognize the gift we have in Jesus and allow his abiding love to flow out of our lives to those around us. May we be carriers of his presence as we serve, as we serve others, as we give to those in need, as we listen to those who need to be heard, and as we see those who need to be seen. May we join our most precious Jesus in giving love 
and not keeping his most precious gift to ourselves. As we light this candle of peace, help us, Holy Spirit, help us to continually abide in relationship in relationship with Jesus to share the love we have received. Amen. Amen. Um, I am also lighting the price candle. I'm sorry, please. Amen. 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 So today we have a special treat today. I'm not just introducing one speaker today. We have a combination of three, okay. three wonderful you. speakers today. Those wonderful people that you've get, gotten to hear, gotten to get to know, and you know how special they are and how much they love Christ. And how much Christ has influenced them to the point where they want to influence others for Christ. So after the next election, you will hear from our very own Reverend Brian Boykins, Reverend Vera Odom, and Reverend David Owen Sibley. Put your hands and hands in the your tablets, your notes, because you will need them, okay? Because they always give us so much that we can apply to our lives, and you don't want to miss those important messages. So be prepared. To receive, hallelujah, amen.
We heard the scripture already. But I'm going to read Isaiah 49 verses 1 through 7. You know me. We can talk about Jesus. But let's talk about how they say he's going to come. Yeah. Let's talk about it in the, in the Old Testament where they say when they prophesy of his birth mm -hmm. and of his coming. Yes. Okay. Yes. Isaiah 49 verses 1 through 7. Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you people from afar. You see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me stop. I'm about to get into my sermon. And take heed, you people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, mm -hmm. from the matrix of my mother. That's what a matrix is. A matrix is a mother's womb. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me. And made me a polished shaft. In his quiver he has hidden me. And he has said to me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I say, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord. And my work with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob to him, so that Israel is gathered to him, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. Listen closely. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhors, to the servants of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Amen. Let us look to our Father in prayer. Glorious Father, in your matchless name, we thank you and we praise you today. What great thing you have done for us by sending your Son into this world, this world that is in need of a Savior, a world that is in need of salvation. Therefore, Father, may our, may our hearts and minds be open to your word, for your word speaks of his coming, and your word speaks of his salvation to us. Bless us now with your word, that we will go with this, and we will speak to all the nations, glorifying you and your Son, the Holy One of Israel, the Redeemer, our rock and our strength. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 So I'm going to go through this real quick. Okay. Because I've been told to take my time. I like those are good words. Those are good words. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you something. As I read this, this uh Chapter 49, I said, this has the New Testament written all over it. Yes, it does. You read it, I said, this, I can find a lot of this in the New Testament. And you can even find it even before, before that, in the Old Testament. I'm going to show you today where we find this in the Old Testament and the New Testament, just from reading the verses from here. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. yes. Okay, let's do it. I titled this message, The Servant Son. The Servant Son. Now, it starts off like this. Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. What womb could that be? Yeah, exactly. This is the seed of the woman that we know of. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name. What was that one song that was played? It was Emmanuel. 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 Okay. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And we all know Emmanuel means God, God with us. Yes. Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Jesus. Emmanuel. God with us. Isaiah 7 and 14. I know... I, don't, I, I guess either Reverend Owens or maybe Pastor Odin will bring that up with the child was born, the name would be Jesus, I'm not sure. But you're you're still correct. Yeah. That's still correct. Yes. Because he is God with us. The beginning was the word, the word was 
The Word was with God and the Word was God. And He came and He dwelt among us. So yes, exactly. He is God with us and His name is Jesus. Yes. Go on. I am not done. I have more to do. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. Uh-oh. I know what some of you are thinking. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me. Think about it, okay? He has hidden me. In other words, when that time comes, it's going to be revealed to the whole world. Okay? He has hidden me like, you know, like one of these things. But when that, when that time comes, he is now going to be in the world and the world will know him. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword, and in the shadow of his hand he has hit me, and made me a polished shaft. That is good news there. Yes. Because that says that as Jesus, who is his polished shaft, he is righteous. Yes, he is balanced. Yes. There is no crook. There is no bend. There is no nook in him at all. You all know how uh, arrows go. They have to be balanced just right in order to hit the mark. Yes. It says here he was a polished shaft. He had to be he had to be metallic to be polished. So he was beautiful at the same time. In his quiver, he has hidden me. Galatians 4, 4 and 5. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And we may receive the adoption as sons. Remember what he said? And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. I bet some of you were thinking Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. And you probably thought I was going to read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Well let me tell you something. If you thought I was going to read that, you're right. I am going to read that. Yes I am. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 and 13. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I want you to listen carefully to this, okay? Let me start over. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and, <coughs> and open to the eyes of him. Amen. Amen. Him. So if you were thinking the word, it was the word of God, it just mentioned right here that it is him. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a him who is the word of God. Yeah. Who is that him? I believe you. <laughs> and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Okay, yes. I am moving on. Mm. And he and he said to me, "You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified." Then I said, "I have labored in vain; I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord, and my work with my God." I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. John 1, 10 through 13. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. You want some good news though? But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name who were born who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Yes, yes. John chapter 1, verses 10 through 13. Oh, I'm going, now I'm going to go back to the Old Testament. See, we're finding Jesus all throughout the Bible. Yes, okay? yes. All throughout. Yes. All throughout. Psalm, Psalm 2, verses 7 through 9. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the mm -hmm. nations for your inheritance. Remember what we just read? Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work is with God. It says, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. <coughs> Excuse me. 
We are finding Jesus throughout all the scripture. Moving on. And now the Lord says, Who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, so that Israel is gathered to him, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, It is too small a thing that you, that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also <clears throat> I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles. How many Gentiles we have in here right now? I have one person raising two hands. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. So you see, this son that was born, he was given to all of us. All of us. Not just the Jews, and although the Jews reject them. Not all Jews, I'm sorry, Messianic Jews don't reject them. But he was he had been given to us for all of us. For all of our salvation. Yes. Yes. And to restore the preserved ones of Israel, I all I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation yes. to the ends of the earth. Luke chapter 2 verses 25 to 32 I bet you thought I was going to say Jesus said I am the light of the world, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well let me guess what I'm not going to say that right now I'm going to say something else <laughs> Luke chapter 2 verses 25 to 32 And behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and this man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ so he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said Lord now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation yes. which you have prepared before the face of of all peoples, a light, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Yes, this child is the light of the world. Light to the Gentiles, revelation to all of us. Now I'm closing this out. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhors, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship. Because the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. I bet you thought I was going to say every knee shall bow, every tongue shall con confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, through the glory of God the Father, right? Yeah. I'm not going to say that. Okay. Uh, Psalm 22, verses 27 through 29. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nation. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship, and those who go down to the dust shall bow before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. So I just read Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 7. And I showed you throughout Scripture that... Jesus has been prophesied throughout scripture. As who? The salvation of the world. As who? The seed of the woman. As who? Well, the names of God is Holy One. Redeemer. We all know Jesus is our Redeemer. Because he shed his blood on the cross for us. Paid the price for us. But you see, even before that, he humbled himself. And came down to earth. To be with us. To dwell with us. And we know him as. The word of God. Because everything he speaks. It is of the father himself. He does not speak on his own accord. But he is only the only utters the word. That the father has given him. He is Jesus Christ. The son of God. God the son. Our strength. And our redeemer. Amen. 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 Thank mm -hmm. you.
One week I was in the Caribbean living my life. Having the time of my life. And suddenly I come home. Suddenly I go to the hospital. My blood pressure was 97 over 57. My oxygen level was 70. And it's not supposed to be below 90. Suddenly, all of these things began to happen. And I said, Lord, I said, what is it? And he said, I just want to let you know that anything can happen suddenly. And, and that's my message to you, that suddenly anything can happen. And all of you know that I am an avid Eagles fan. I love those Eagles. Suddenly, they lost three games. They stink. They stink. <laughs> they stink. They lost. Being in first place in the league and now in fifth place. <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> suddenly. All of these things happen. But to God be the glory in all that happens. And a multitude of angels, they were everywhere. Everywhere. There are many miracles surrounded Christmas. The angels, the stars, the dreams, the prophecies. And most of all, the virgin birth. But most miracles are just signs pointing to the greatest miracle of all. Yes. That we who live in a world have Jesus living, the Holy Spirit living yes. inside of us. Knowing Jesus is the light of the world, he came to the world of darkness. He left his eternal home for a temporary one to show us the way. Jesus came from heaven to live with us on earth. God explains it to us in various scriptures. First of all, John 3.16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A gift. The grace of God has appeared before bringing salvation to all people. Titus 2 and 11. Another gift. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. We heard that earlier. A gift. All of these gifts. Who thought he was in the, who, who though he was in the form of God, did not count it robbery with God, a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the form of a servant, being born is a likeness of man. Yes. A gift. We are nothing compared to Christ. Yes. We are servants yes. of the Most High God. Yes. And if we see that our brother is hurting or something is going on, as a servant, we are to go and help that brother or that sister. God was manifest in flesh again. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1.14. They called the birth of Christ incarnation. The Word means that God came to earth and shared our humanity. Yes. The infinite became finite. The mortal became the immortal became mortal. The creator became the created. The omnipotent lived inside a young woman's womb. The almighty became a helpless baby. The deity was wrapped in rags. The king of the universe was born in a stable. Yeah. Suddenly, when we least expect it, we're almost, we're giving up hope. You don't give up hope. Because suddenly, God moves in. 
when you're tired or bored or fearful or disgruntled, God breaks through and the angels start to sing. They sang to the shepherds one night in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And they are still singing to death to those who care to hear them. Can you hear the angels sing? They bring good news of great joy, the best news the world has ever heard. The song says, joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. Yes. If you listen with your whole heart, you can still hear them sing, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth among those with whom he is pleased. Jesus, we, mail, we kneel down to you in silent amazement, thanking you because of your birth, we know that the Father is with us. May we welcome you, not in a cold manger, but into our hearts. Make our hearts pure, our heart warm, with love for one another. Jesus, the shepherd of your flock, the divine healer, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, you are the glory of eternity who now shines among us. The Son of the Most High, Splendor of Father, Source of Life, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Patterns of Goodness, Friend of All, Brother of the Poor, Champion of, champion of Justice, Joy of Angels. Jesus, Jesus, in you, we see God's face, gentle, smiling, strong, and loving, obedient. Jesus, you radiant what the world needs today. Love, gentleness, tenderness, light, and hope. In you may we find gentleness as an answer to the violence, tenderness as an answer to the ill, Ill will, light as the answer to lies, hope as the answer to despair. Your mercy brings forgiveness, have mercy on us, bring us a true sorrow of our sins, give us eternal life. For your glory fills eternity, your glory fills the universe, and the goals for living God gives us a safe place. God is our safe place and our strength. He's always our help when we are in trouble. Psalms 46 and 1. God, God is secure. He secures us. And you will, feel you will feel secure because there is hope. You will look around and take rest in security. That was Job 11 and 8. Enough time. A lot of times we say we don't have enough time. But for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under the heavens. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Can you trust Him? Yes. It is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in me. Psalms 118 and 8. Does He have power to help me? Yes. Finally, brother. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yes. Ephesians 6 and 10. Yes. Will he take care of my future? Jeremiah 11, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, yes. declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Yes. Here's the truth. You're in good hands with Jesus. Yes. His hands rule the universe. We all need him. We need him more now than we have ever needed him before. Place your life in his strong hands and you will never be disappointed. Place your family in his strong hands and you will never be disappointed. 
Place yourself in his strong hands and you will never be disappointed. Listen to the angels sing. And if you do not hear the angels sing, and if you do not accept Christ, and if you need prayer, and a sudden experience has, has come over you, we ask that you raise your hand and someone will come and pray for you. Because joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Will you be ready this time? Maybe you'll be like the shepherds here who are ready to hear the good news of the gospel and ready to respond to that good news and began to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ because God sent his son as a savior for those who believed. Will you be ready if someone is lost in sin, dying, and maybe, maybe need your help to get out of the trouble and, the, and, the, and what it is that they're in. They, they got tied up and they need to be cleaned up. And angels were singing, they were talking, they were, they were doing what the Lord had proclaimed them to do, to announce the birth of our Savior. You know, um, Luke, Luke, excuse me, Luke 2, it said, um, it says, suddenly the sky was filled with a host of angels singing loudly. They weren't whispering. So what does that tell me? That tells me that when we get in church, we're supposed to sing loudly. We're not supposed to be whispering, even if it is, <coughs> excuse me, even if it is on the screen. We're supposed to sing loudly. David talks about this in Psalms 86 and 12. He said, I will praise you, O oh my God, with all my heart. Yes. And I will glorify your name forever. Amen. Are we glorifying God's name forever? Yes. Yes. Can you hear the angels sing? Simple question. Either you can imagine it or you can't. The angels appeared before the shepherds, and the shepherds were afraid. But they said, but, but the angels said, fear not. The shepherds heard what the angels said. The angels came before Joseph, and he said, fear not. Mary is pregnant, yes, younger, pregnant. But that was a divine pregnancy. Yes, yes. And the angels let Joseph know that it was all right to continue to marry this young lady. Yes. Fear not. The angel Gabriel came before Mary and she said, fear not. Because I'm sure that there were many questions in her mind because of being a young woman and not, not being with a man and then all of a sudden, there's a child in my womb. But it was a divine appointment. And the angel said, fear not. The most important word in this text is suddenly. Because you never know what suddenly is going to be. And you say, well, why suddenly? I'm glad you asked the question. Okay. Because the angel's supernatural being, choir, stopped everything. When the angels began to sing, everything was quiet. Jerusalem was only eight miles away. And I was wondering, I said, well, did they hear angels sing? And Herod was in, in, the, in the castle. I said, did he hear the angels sing? But the angels were singing to whom God wanted them to hear. God speaks to each and every one of us. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. 
are you walking before God the way he wants you to walk? Suddenly, without warning, without prior announcement, the angels were there and then they weren't there. And my mind began, I began to wonder and I said, well, when the angels disappeared, how were the shepherds feeling? But the shepherds didn't even think about that. What they did was they said that we had to go and tell. We had to go to go and tell someone what, what it is that we heard. We had to go and see this Christ child. Yes. When the Lord is speaking to you, he's telling you to go. Go and talk to someone. Go and, and, and speak about Jesus. And do what needs to be done. There's a lot of suddenlies in the Bible, I realize. And in 2 Kings, another angel encounter. Elijah prayed. And his servant looked out the door and seen a host, an army, a host. And he feared. And he said that something, we're, we're going to die. But Elijah asked God to open up the eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened up the young man's eyes and he saw behind all of that army, behind everyone, there was a host, a mountain full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Suddenly, everything seemed and it's empty. But God fills our suddenly. Elijah's servant saw what the Lord would do. And he saw it suddenly. And said, do not be afraid. Angels were everywhere. Was it possible to miss the supernatural element in the birth of Christ? Angels popped up all over the Christmas story. An angel tells Mary she's going to give birth. An angel tells Joseph to go ahead on and marry her. An angel tells the wise men to go another way. Jesus was protected in every aspect of his birth. And if you know the story, Herod was killing all the children ages 2 and under to make sure that Jesus would not live because he did not want anyone to take his place. And then I was wondering and I said well the Magi they traveled distance but they studied, they studied the stars, they studied the word they studied all of these things and when they finally seen the star, the North Star in the sky, they said it's time to move. It's time to find this Christ child. They went to Herod and asked him some information about, about the Christ child and he pretended that he wanted to know all about it, you know, but suddenly the angel of the Lord told them that Herod wanted to kill him, kill the child, and to go another way. There is a divine presence today. Today, a divine presence. And there are so many suddenlies that happen in our lives. We, we hear the angels sing and they're announcing the birth of Christ. Christ came to give us life more abundantly. Christians should not be frowning. Christians should not be sad. And I'm not saying that there aren't some times that come into your life and you feel bad about it, but <clears throat> you have a village that is here to help you 
help you to hear the angels singing, proclaiming that Christ is born. Christ brought joy unspeakable. And that's how we prepare for Christmas. We hear the angels singing. We block out all the noise and all the shopping and, and you know, all the rigmarole about who's going to get this gift and who's going to get that gift and, and should I buy this gift and all of those things. But one thing this year, first year, I wasn't able to do a Christmas shopping. I wasn't able to buy no gifts. But I was just as happy. <laughs> I had a joy that was unspeakable. And I thank and praise God for the angels that were singing, proclaiming the, the birth of Christ. Because suddenly, I knew what Christmas was all about. I knew that Jesus was the reason for the season. But that suddenly made me aware. When Christ came down, they want to make New Year's revolutions time and time again. But your New Year's resolution should be, Lord, help me to be more like you. The good news. Or maybe you're like Herod, too proud, too educated, or too powerful to think that you need a Savior. My friend, my question to you is, when you suddenly realize that you're standing before a holy and righteous God, what will he say to you? Or maybe you want to be like the wise men and, and you've been searching for years to find some peace and contentment of the meaning of life, of whatever drives you. I've heard people say that this is a, a dead church. But it's only dead because you're not doing anything. I heard people say, I can't get anything from it, from what's going on in church. You are the church. Yes. You are the one that Jesus wants to make a bright and morning star. Set your mind on Christ Jesus and not the people in the church. You are. Follow the star today because it will lead you to the cross of Christ. Are you ready to serve? Are you ready to be obedient to whatever he has called you to do? Don't delay because suddenly happens without warning. Suddenly happens without warning. You and I have an appointment to keep, and it will come suddenly. Take this moment right now to respond to the call and allow him to suddenly change your life for all eternity. Gracious Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word, and I thank you for suddenly, because we are here today, and we're going tomorrow. But God, your suddenly was to bring good news. And God, we want to bring good news to this world. There's so many things that are happening, so many things that are going on. But God, you told us that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed that we can move mountains. So help us to move mountains. Help us to bust this place wide open, God. Because suddenly, you'll be coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Can you hear me? idea that we all preach for about 15 minutes. I thought that there was a little challenge to that because it takes me 15 minutes to clear my throat. So I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to preach. What I'm gonna, they, they preach. I'm going to offer a meditation. Small meditation. So I don't want you to get whiplash because I'm going to be gone. So. Small meditation. And it comes out of Matthew. Matthew, second chapter of Matthew, verse 11, it says, And they came into the house, and they saw the child with Mary his mother. They bowed down and worshipped him. They opened up their treasure boxes and gave him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Who are the they? They are the wise men. Or what the Bible says is the wise men. But let me set the scene. The scene is, they're not in the house, they're in a state. Yeah. And the baby is not in a bed, it's in a manger. And let me explain to you what a manger is. A manger is a feeding trough for the animals. It's where they went to feed, to get their water. And so they must have dumped all that out, thrown hay in the manger, put the baby in the manger, there's in the day of the stable, it stinks in there. It smells like the children's room. It smells like their room. And so this place stunk. And here come these gentlemen that they call wise men. And what the Bible has revealed is they were magi. Magi is where we get the word magicians from. They were sorcerers. The Bible says sorcery is a sin. They were, they were Zoriasters. They didn't worship God. They didn't worship. They were not there to see Christ come and raise the anointing. They were worshiping the astrology because they were in Zoriasterism. They were from the northern part of Iraq and Iran. And they saw the stars because they studied the stars. They went to see this light. And they looked to see what this was all about. And they walk in and they see Jesus. So my meditation is what did they see that rocked their world, that changed their whole world around, that changed them to transform them from being practitioners of astrology and sorcery and magic into worshipers of Jesus Christ. So then my meditation becomes what would it take for you to give Jesus everything you got. What would it take for you to worship him the way he ought to be worshipped? What would it take you to offer him everything you had to change your way? Because the Bible said they, heard, they saw this dream and they went back another way to go and to bring Jesus to Iraq, to northern Iraq and Iran. Now how do I know that happened? Because in, this, in Acts in the second chapter it says those who came to see Peter at the beginning of the church age were Parthons and Medes who are from Iraq and Iran. And the only reason why they heard about it because they heard me brothers bring back Jesus to them. So I'm asking you, what would it take for you to give them everything you got? Because we don't do that. We hold back. I mean, Tim, who is a lot? A tenth. Wow. I can't see you giving him a tenth. But they gave him everything. Didn't even know anything about him. Just understood that they were standing in the presence of God. Yes, yes, yes. When you walk down the street, you're in the presence of God. Yes. The Bible says He will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you're walking down the street with Him, you're walking with God. Yes. You don't have to worry because you walk through the valley of the yes. shadow of death. Yes. You shall fear no evil. You shall not worry about anything. Yes. But we walk as though we're cringing. Yes. We're afraid of the sounds. We hear certain sounds and we run. We have God. 
God with us. Yes. Who can be against you? Who, who can stand against you? That's right. That's right. God says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Amen. Walk like it. Amen. Walk like you have that. Yes. All because of this child that was born in a stinking place in a bad situation but then you just like him you can't worry about what you see and what you hear yes. you have to know what you have yes. and what you have is Christ in you yes. your hope for glory yes. shall we all stand Heavenly Father, the word has been preached. The word has been heard. Yes. We're here, we're testifying that we belong to you. Yes. That we want more of you. That we're ready to give you everything we have because you gave us everything that you had. Bless us, Lord God. Yes. The word is going out for those who don't know Jesus to just come up and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And you don't have to do it for just now. You can do it any time as long as you're in the place of God. You can go and ask anybody. What must you do? But if there's something that's burning in your heart that you want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you can come up now. You can raise your hand. Or if you want to belong to this church, you can raise your hand. So the Son will come to you and give you some directions on what you can do. Lord, I ask you to bless your people and be gracious unto them. Give them what they need. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's all awesome time.
wonders of his love, and wonder and wonders of his love. Amen. 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 <laughs> 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 Good morning. Well, good afternoon, Christ Center. Good afternoon. Let's give our trio another round of applause. <laughs> I see we have our own St. Nick in here, so he's black, so he's St. Jackson. That's his name. Right on. Yeah. So if y'all get y'all present, talk to this man right here. And praise the praise too, brother. Thank you. Now, before I start, I got to give a shout out to our beloved Sister Ann. And when I say this, I'm just reading from a script. <laughs> and recently I should know what to think about scripts. <laughs> so I want to say happy Christmas Eve to all. I'm happy those who are here. Thank you. And let's keep our brother and sister and friends and first lady in prayer. Yes. And they're out there in the West Coast enjoying this 75, 80 degree Christmas weather. <laughs> yes. So let's, let's, let's get this thing rolling because I know y'all want to get home and, and, and oh, the Eagles don't play until tomorrow. Oh, well. So. They don't lose anyway. I ain't say that. <laughs> okay. Monday, let's see, Thursday, January 4th. Uh, focus group study will be take place at 730. The lessons based on the Philippians chapter 1. Reverend Brian Boykin will serve as the Bible study supervisor, instructor. You got that look like, all right, well, I'm talking about that. Uh, Saturday, January 6th, uh, the, D, the DVPF pastors are invited to attend a pastor meeting at 11 a.m. The sign information will be sent to your email. Uh, that's by way of David, our brother David Stevens. Uh, Holy Communion, Sunday, January 7th. Um, General announcements, you know, ties and offerings, you have to put them in the door, kind of, you know, stuff them in there. We don't want nobody coming in and taking the money. So kind of put those things in there, or you can still use Givify. Um, let's see, Brother Dan Burnside, don't forget him. Clearly can't forget him. Uh, Brother Daniel Burnside, Saunders House Nursing and Relocation Center, um, room 102, 100 East Lancaster Rev in Winfield, PA. Yeah, this is just a short announcement. I guess they want me to hurry up and get out of here. So, business meeting, um, January 16th. Um, that's about all the information I have for that. And let's see, uh, birthdays. What's this, uh, Marion Sullivan? Marion, yes. Marion Sullivan? Yes. We'll celebrate that on, um, let's see, the 26th, which is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the announcements. Amen. And again, we get you from the script. Now we're going to send this home as our beloved brother. One more? What's that one more? It's not in there about next Sunday. I don't see anything. What, what, what's happening next Sunday? Well, Next Gen is hosting our the watch and service, um, okay. which is first December 31st as we bring in the new year. Um, is Red carpet event. So come mm -hmm. to celebrate. Okay, so wear your best. <laughs> Four more top. At the eleven o'clock. It's in the morning, yes. We we celebrate okay. in the morning instead of the evening. So our service is at eleven. Okay. And we'll bring in the new year. Right over. Well, we're having that celebration. So we'll come prepared. I'm sure you'll get more information for that and I want to give a special shout out to our very own Sister Ogham. See you back here. Yes. 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 Won't God do it? Yes. Yes. So we're going to take us home as our very own brother, David Owens, the Cowboy fan. Suddenly. <laughs> 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 
that works. See how we all stand. It was a great, we had a great time, didn't it? Yes. 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 Good. It's good to be in fellowship together. Make sure that you greet someone after the service and smile at them and tell them how good they look. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just enjoy ourselves in you, Lord God. We thank you that you are indeed with us. You have promised never to leave us nor forsake us, whether we're in the church or whether we're in our home, in our beds, or walking down the street. You are with us. And because you are with us, we have this song in our heart. We have this promise that we have to eternity, Lord God. So now bless us, Lord God. Now unto him who is able to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And let the church say amen.